Mike, you mentioned the Cloud 3 plan that was announced mm-hmm. back at AutoCAD 1. At AutoCon 1 in Amsterdam, we announced the Netbox Cloud 3 plan. It's a ton easier to get started with learning something when in 60 seconds you can click on a button and get access to the tool that you need. What's the uptake then? Uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but it's thousands. I mean, we have an internal Slack channel when, that pings us whenever someone signed up, and um, you know, it's just this constant stream. I, it, it's it's thousands. Yeah, thousands. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, of live, I mean, you can tell people are using this thing. They they sniffing around. How's it going? Yeah, there's, there's kind of different ways we can figure that out. So we can see. Um, I believe we reach out to everybody, you know, in case they want to chat. Um, we also see if they're clicking around in that box what they're doing. They actually get two options when they spin it up. They can get an empty net box you know, if they've got some kind of project in mind, or they can get a populated net box with a bunch of demo data if they're more trying to figure out the data model. And we can see some of that. Um, so obviously not everybody who signs up, it like goes and does loads of stuff with it. But I think it's like most of these cloud tools, like you get a, you get kind of a long tail, like some people really get in there and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then some people, you know, they sign up somewhere and they forget about it. Yeah. 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 That's, I'm, uh, I'm guilty of both. There's yeah. certain tools no, I'll I get right into and it's oh, like, I've yeah, got so many it's subscriptions it's that I've forgotten yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So good uptake is the, is, is the, story. oh, it's great. And it's growing. And what's interesting is it's really stable. So, um, there was obviously a big acceleration at first and then it's stabilized. I can't remember how many every week, but we report on it every week and it looks like it's just like, you know, slowly growing, but weekly steady numbers, no, no big peaks, which is interesting because it shows me that it's kind of probably being used for learning. A yeah. lot, you know, people coming back to labs or like the, the thing that they did here, yeah. And, and that's the big thing I would imagine Cloud3 mm-hmm. is uh, especially good for. It's not just going to yeah. be companies that want to want to test drive it. Yeah, that's a thing. But for those folks who are labbing, trying to figure out network automation and need a source of truth and want an API to work against, that's it. That's the tool to use. Yeah. And in the, in the keynote just now, I, I mean, we didn't see those stats ahead of time, but um, we saw that, uh, you know, top right along with Python, Netbox is up there as like most want to yeah. learn, which we, we hadn't seen that. That's really cool. And yeah. I imagine, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to probably go to the free plan. So it's, it's working as intended. Okay. Good, Mark, you mentioned diode mm-hmm. uh, several times. We also brought diode to market. So one of the first things you want to start doing when you're automating networks is making sure that you've got a good baseline to automate against in your network source of truth. Diode is something we've invested in a lot. I'm going to be talking more about it a little bit later in my talk. It helps you to get data into Netbox more easily. And it was almost like we all knew what Diode was. We don't all know what Diode is. So That's explain right. Diode and how it fits into the Netbox Labs world. I was foreshadowing a little bit because everyone's going to know what Diode is. But the way to think about Diode is that it's one of the, I mean, it's, it's open source. People can go use it. Um, and it does a couple of things. So uh, some of our customers um, throw, and open source users throw like huge amounts of data at Netbox. And um, one of the things that Diode does for you is it kind of acts as a proxy, and it will make sure that all of that data safely lands, right? It's so what's it mean, data normalization? Also, yeah. So think about it, one is like um, proxying and making sure that all the data that you've actually sent gets there. Uh, the other is um, you can send, like people want to send stuff to Netbox in all sorts of formats. You know, it could be from a discovery tool, it could be massive spreadsheets. We've, you know, we've got customers who are onboarding tons and tons of new racks every single week. And you know, all of that needs to get in somehow. And really Diode was our first step towards creating like a unified API for this. And I, I kind of think about it as like the, you know, the, the fuel, the fuel hole on the, on the DeLorean from Back to the Future where you just throw whatever in and it goes. Yeah. It's a bit like that for data into Netbox. And the way it does it is it gives you um, an SDK you can use to write uh, objects in whichever order you want, irrespective of the Netbox data model. And then it'll figure out, okay, given all of this, I'm going to go and apply it in a way that the database uh, gets. So, you know, think about it as like really lowering the barrier to getting data into Netbox. But I'm probably not using Diode as a network engineer, it doesn't sound like. But it might underpin tools that I am using. Yeah, it's 100%. Yes, yeah. so if you're a network automation engineer, you might love this for sure. Because you're saying, let's stop manually uploading all those scripts. Okay, well, let's use the Netbox API. Okay, well, that's a bit tricky because the volume's too big. And then you land in Diode. And you say, I'm going to write to Diode instead, and it's going to take care of a bunch of that stuff for me. I still get the same output, but as an automator, my life's now a ton easier. Okay. Yeah. One of your announcements from the stage today was Netbox Discovery. Mm -hmm. And that's why this morning we introduced Netbox Discovery. Netbox Discovery extracts the operational state from your network so that you can onboard that information into Netbox. 
it helps you to know where and when you're seeing operational drift across days one, 1 1.5, mm -hmm. and two. So, so, okay, explain what we're doing here with NetMox Discovery and then explain how it impacts the partner ecosystem because there are folks out there who have discovery engines just for NetBox already. That's right, yeah. So NetBox Discovery kind of does what it says on the tin. Um, it will go and for a certain number of vendors that are supported out of the box, it'll go and find out information about you know the devices themselves and the interfaces and MTUs and all the kind of stuff you would want there. Uh, and that will grow over time. Yeah. If I give it a seed network device, will it crawl the network? That Will it do that sort of discovery, or do I have to give it a list? So currently, we, we refer to this as network discovery, device discovery, and then crawling. So network discovery, it does. And that's like, give me a subnet, and I'll go find all the devices in it, and then I'll run device discovery on each of those. LLDP. L, yeah, right. But we don't do that yet. So what we say is you can do network discovery, which is I'll find all the devices in a subnet. And you can do device discovery, which is once I know there's a device, I'll find out the information about that device. Okay. But what we don't do yet is then go from that device to all of its friends through LLDP and ARP tables and everything else. That That's fancier stuff that some of our partners have got here. Okay, okay. So... So it is a list then at this point. I would be saying, here's a list of things, NetBox Discovery. Go forth and figure out everything there is to know about these devices. And then when you've got that data, bring it into NetBox. That's right. And the first time people use this, it's because NetBox is only as valuable as the data in it. So you know, people are realizing that when they start to automate, they need to have a source of truth so they've got something to compare against. And you can see the discovery is basically two purposes. One is how do we get all that in there in the first place? Yep. And that's not normally like a one-shot deal, but because what people find out is, oh yeah, we've got different device naming conventions. And actually <laughs> they end up doing like a two month spring clean, but now it's automated to get that in. And then after that, it's reconciliation. So now I've got mm -hmm. a baseline, but I'm constantly checking like what's now the state of that device. Because like I said on stage, it's a wildfire. Those things are changing all the time. Yeah. Well, that was my next question. Is it going to do diffs for me and so on on a regular basis to kind of let me know what mm -hmm. the network has become versus what it was the last time I brought it in? That's right. So Diode does some of this already, and we're really building on top of Diode. So um, you can think about uh, um, you can think about discovery as being like a bunch of agents that are pushing stuff to Diode, and Diode is really the I'd say the engine underneath that figures out you know okay you sent me. 50 Cisco devices, but in NetBox, I only see 30. So therefore, there's a diff of 20, well, super simple example, but yeah. it's figuring that out. But on top of that, um, we have NetBox Assurance, which is much more powerful. So fit NetBox discovery mm -hmm. into the open source versus paid enterprise model of, of NetBox. Sure, easy, uh, open source. Yeah, okay. so, so if you want to use discovery, like what we want to make sure is that you can achieve these workflows, uh, whether you're paying us or not. So you, if, you know, if you want to have, and we'll get, get to assurance, I, I think, but if you want to have basically what you get with NetBox Discovery plus NetBox Assurance, uh, you can use NetBox Discovery plus Diode, and you will be able to you know, go discover all these devices, do the comparisons, get them into NetBox, even put them into a branch these days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so then, yeah, NetBox Assurance then is the next question. Uh, but as our discovery partners, and many of you know, discovery is just part of the puzzle which is why I'm also excited that we announced NetBox Assurance this morning. Uh, what is that doing for me? How do I interact with that? Right, so if you think about what, um, what Diode does today, it does a lot of the sort of heavy lifting to figure out what the diff is, but then you're presented with a diff, mm -hmm. right? and that diff could be pretty big. Now, so super powerful, but, um, but what we're doing in Assurance is we're saying kind of kind of what I call day 1.5 and day two in the presentation. So what, you know, one of the things that we learn from our design partners, we always, we always reach out to the community and say, hey, we'll think we're gonna build this, what do you think? And then they always pile on and tell us all these things. And uh, you know, a couple of them said, this is great, but if I switch this on, I will have 20,000 deviations a day. <laughs> so what I'm more interested in than like, you know, figuring out the individual deviation is what's the shape of it? Like, is it interfaces? Is it in the Denver site? Uh, so like an aggregation of changes yeah. rather than every individual thing listed. Yeah, well, that's the first thing it does because what you can also do is you can click all the way down and say, oh, that's interesting. The MTU on this interface changed overnight. I would like to update that netbox or I'd like to do something about it. But what we added that I think we you know, hadn't planned to add at first is that higher level view where people just want to know where's the pain. So mm -hmm. much higher level aggregation, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to the open source versus paid version, how does assurance fit in? Assurance fits in on the commercial side right now. Um, I do think 
uh, you know, with all of these uh, products that end up going into the commercial side, as we have more and more of them, what we might see is an opening up of that. But you know, with branching, we made branching totally free and change management commercial. Here we're making discovery totally free and uh, yeah, an insurance commercial. And, and we'll see how it pans out. I mean, discovery is coming up real soon. Mm -hmm. Insurance is you know, a couple of months out, so that gives some time to, to still think through it. But I, I think that's a good uh, sort of mental model for now. Yeah. So, OK, you've announced Netbox Discovery. You've mm -hmm. announced Netbox Assurance. When are these going to be available? So Netbox Discovery is going to be available in Q4 2024. Uh, and obviously, we're sat here, <laughs> and that means that, means that means in the next six weeks, uh, you, you, like it'll be there before December thirty first. I think really what we're deciding now is how much additional effort do we put in around some of the some of the areas. Yeah, so coming up real soon. In other words, deciding how many features to bake into one dot Well, there's that, but there's also you know all the all the work that we do to make sure that when somebody goes to the GitHub, they can have a really easy time. You know, intuitive workflows getting it quickly. And that's, you know, you, you can do an infinite amount of that. So sometimes, sometimes you got to figure out where to stop. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So that is uh, discovery. What about assurance then? We're saying beginning of 2025 for that one. Okay. Uh, and you know, I think that's pretty accurate. We saw this uh, with, with branching and change management where they're, they're really tightly coupled, but we just think it's too much to release one, like both all at once. So really getting, uh, uh, getting discovery out first and then moving over to assurance makes sense. And you know, I, I think you know, we're saying like Q1, Q2 max. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mark Coleman, Netbox Labs, thank you for joining Packet Pushers. Um, where should people go if they want to find out more? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You go to netboxlabs.com and you'll find all sorts of stuff on there, including um, discovery and assurance. Now, do people reach out to you, or can people reach out to you if they got any questions? Uh, they often do, and they're welcome to do so. Yeah. yeah. So they can find me at uh, mcoleman at netboxlabs.com, but more typically, they go to netdev.chat, sign up for the Slack, okay. and find me in there under my name, or Twitter, or LinkedIn, whatever. Yeah.